Hello, today we're going to look at the practice problems for chapter 8. Uh, selected a few problems that help to uh, understand a little bit about rotational dynamics and static equilibrium. So let's take a look at the first problem. We've got a 20 kilogram uh, floodlight. So that's the mass of our uh, of our floodlight in a park and it's supported at the end of a horizontal beam of negligible mass that is hinged to a pole. A cable at an angle of 30 degrees, here is our cable, with a beam helps support the light. That's our 20 kilogram light. Now so that's the mass of the light, not the weight of the lights. Um, we are asked to find first two, um, we're going to look at two, two solutions here for the first the tension in the cable and then B the horizontal and the vertical forces exerted on the beam by the pole. So we've got um, forces in the horizontal, forces in the vertical. If we look at the bottom here I've provided the uh, free body diagram and you can see we've got a horizontal force this arrow here is supposed to be your vertical force along the pole and then we've got a tension in the cable the weight of the uh, of the light itself that floodlight you have to determine the weight of that floodlight is what the mass times the um, acceleration of gravity so first let's do like we've learned in the other chapter uh, by summing our forces um, that we need to um, sum the forces then uh, first in any one of the directions either perpendicular to the page in the x direction or in the y direction so let's start with summing the forces uh, associated with the rotation or the torque so in doing this the sum of all the torques then along the beam set equal to zero and we can start inserting those values. So first off let's take a look at the far end which is going to be the tension in the cable at 30 degrees times the distance and we're going to subtract then from that the straight downward um, um, weight of the light times its distance. So all those distances are the lever arms. When we rearrange the terms we can see that we have a value of D and a value of D, the length of the pole. That is not given in the problem. So what do we have to do? Well, in this case, it conveniently cancels out. So we don't even need to know the length of the pole. Okay? So those two values cancel out, and I'm left with the tension in the cable times the sine of 30 degrees, and it being equal to the weight of the floodlight, 196 newtons. So moving our terms around, 196 newtons divided by the sine of 30 degrees gives us our resultant tension there of 392 newtons. So now we can move to the second part of the problem. To do this, let's first sum all of the forces in the x direction. Set that equal to zero. So everything in the x direction is going to be the horizontal. So the horizontal force of the pole pushing against the, the uh, vertical pole, then minus the tension, the component of the tension, cosine 30 degrees. And that tells us then that that horizontal force pushing on that part of the pole then is equal to the tension times the cosine of 30. Since we've already solved for that tension, 392 newtons, multiply it times the cosine of 30, and we have a value of 339 newtons to the right. Okay, so that's the horizontal component. Now we switch to summing the forces in the y direction. In doing so, now we take the vertical component, add it to the vertical component of the tension in the, uh, in, in the, um, the cable times 30 degrees and solve for the vertical component. So the vertical component is equal to 196, that's the weight of the light, minus the tension times the sine of 30 degrees. And lo and behold, as we sum these values, we end up with a vertical component of zero. So there is no vertical component in this problem. 